So we're going to take you through Gruber Motor Company today. It's an electric vehicle uh, service organization specializing in Tesla vehicles. Uh, this building is about 8,000 square feet and um, we are um, doing quite a bit of service work in here. In the front area, I'm going to show you an electronics lab. And the whole design goal of this, uh, of this building was to, unlike an automotive repair shop, immediately create the image that this is all about electronics. Before we continue with the rest of the video, it's important to talk about what Gruber Motors is actually doing. They are keeping alive the original Tesla Roadster by servicing them and bringing them back to life if a battery gets bricked. They are fixing PEMS, which is the electronic modules that power the Tesla Roadsters. Gruber Motors has fixed countless Roadsters over the last few years of them working on this project. They are now starting to branch into Model S and X and eventually Model 3. This is quite possibly the first aftermarket Tesla repair facility of this size in the world. And it's amazing to see what they're doing. So as we come in here, you can see there's, a, uh, there's an electronics lab with a lot of um, uh, test equipment and uh, activity going on here related to the electronics. These two black boxes here are Tesla Roadster Power Electronic Modules, or PEMS, as they're known. And um, this is the drive uh, portion of a Tesla Roadster vehicle. This is what converts all of the DC in the battery system to three-phase AC to power a three-phase AC induction motor, which was, which was uh, invented by Nikolai Tesla over 100 years ago. The rest of this operation is uh, repairing UPS power modules. Uh, we don't have any on the bench right now. It looks like we're doing nothing but EV today. This is a uh, Tesla Model S MCU uh, stack here. Uh, we work on those as well. And uh, normally they would have uh, UPS modules here. And that's what got us in this business. We've been repairing UPSs for about 36 years now. and. Um, it's the same technology as what is found in these electric cars. DC, plant, inverter, three phase, or single phase in the UPS world, and um, what it powers is different. Uh, in a car, of course, you're driving a motor. In a data center, you're powering all of your servers and computers. What Ken is doing here, we um, developed our own uh, uh, processes through reverse engineering, which is a really tough way to go. And uh, this is an example of a board that we um, uh, reverse engineered. This is out of a Tesla Roadster, the power supply board, right, Ken? Right. And uh, what we do is we look for the test points, uh, and then we're able to repair this product in the future. Let's go out in the service area, and I can show you what happens uh, in the cars. So this section here is the UPS test section for power modules. There's another building we have where we repair the large UPSs themselves. In this section, they repair strictly the power modules. And this 10 kVA power module is a three-phase inverter, just like that power electronics module in the Roadster, except this one goes into an APC Symmetra UPS, and uh, it powers a data center. So again, the technology is very similar. Um, the cars that you see here are a combination of flood damaged cars that we purchased during the hurricane season a year and a half ago, and roadsters. Um, our parts roadsters, some of them are stored here, and these are cars that we purchased at auction for parts, uh, for uh, donor cars. Um, sometimes we get good battery packs and then we're able to uh, revive a, a brick roadster that's beyond recovery. The way we got into this business, uh, we had been repairing UPSs in, for 36 years, since 1984. And um, I bought a lightning green Tesla, or a, a Tesla Roadster. One day, I had the trunk lit up and I was taking my lunch pail out and one of our field engineers that services UPSs walked by and asked me what this black box was. I explained to him that this was the three-phase inverter that takes all this battery power, converts it to three-phase to power the motor under here, and he pointed out that we can repair these. 
And uh, that was a paradigm shift that actually created Gruber Motor Company, because I agreed with them. Within two months, we had hired somebody that was advertising on Craigslist as being able to repair Tesla Roadsters, or Teslas in general. And uh, we hired the gentleman, and we began to offer Tesla Roadster repair services. We bought our first parts Roadster, and uh, from there, we began to um, look at the aftermarket opportunity with the Tesla Roadster. Um, we began to realize that Tesla's options regarding a PEM, a faulty PEM, was fairly limited. They would replace it for $10,000, but um, they were no longer willing to go into the PEM and actually repair it. So that was the first batch of business that we got, was people that didn't want to spend $10,000 on PEM and that were willing to get theirs repaired. We then realized that there were cars that were being bricked, and uh, Tesla by then had a $30,000 replacement option. We discovered a method for recovering battery packs, which included building our own power supplies. Now, here's an example of how we did this. Inside 480 volt UPSs, they have a 480 to 120 transformer to power all of the instrumentation in the UPS. So we simply um, inverted uh, the transformer, we feed it with a Variac, uh, 0 to 130 volts on the 120 volt side, and then the 480 volt side goes through a rectifier, capacitor, filter, and we're able to create a 400 volt power supply variable. We started to use these to do a string charge across the battery pack on a bricked dead roadster. Now let me explain a bricked roadster for a moment. When a roadster isn't charged for two or three months, the charge port will no longer respond or allow a charge to occur. And it doesn't take very long. Uh, and sadly enough, sometimes people have gone on vacation, for example. They left their car plugged in, but a circuit breaker tripped during a thunderstorm. They come back a couple, three months later, only to realize that their car is now dead. We found that instead of a $30,000 battery pack replacement, by doing that string charge uh, in a very controlled way, we were able to wake the car back up at around 330, 350 volts or so. The car would come back to life. It would talk to us. It would start beeping. Uh, it would tell us that the charge is low. And we were then able to plug back into the main port here and allow the much more sophisticated Tesla battery management system to take over balance the cells, and recharge the car. We've recovered a number of cars like this. In a more advanced case, if it doesn't respond to that type of recovery because it had been bricked longer than three to six months, we then have to pull the battery pack. And let me show you what that looks like. And this is what we call a level two battery recovery. Um, to drop one of these battery packs, by the way, this is about a thousand pounds. It fits up inside the bowels of this little Lotus Elise sports car. And uh, there isn't a half an inch to spare on either side. So you have to kind of shoehorn it in and be very careful taking it out. To remove it, you have to remove suspension components in order to gain the clearance necessary to drop this pack. Once you drop the pack, you open the front and you can see there are exactly 11 sheets in this battery pack. And what we then do is we decide which of these sheets are causing a problem. And it's usually a brick in a sheet or multiple bricks in a sheet that have, that have been allowed to get below two volts. And there's a uh, chemical reaction that occurs in these 18650 cells. If you drop below two volts, they actually begin to, um, uh, to destroy themselves. So by the time we have this pack open, we then find the sheets that aren't coming back up and we can actually charge one sheet at a time to see where it's going to end up and how it's going to hold. And in some cases we have to change the sheets. In this particular pack we've got four sheets that have been replaced. Anything with a white sticker on it has been a replacement sheet. Then we again charge and uh, put it back together and uh, the car usually comes back to life at this point. Now one thing to point out here is um, this pack takes about a day and a half to properly remove, open up, and, and to assess. This car was not really designed to be serviced, easily at least. Um, had there been more time, what Tesla could have thought about was putting a hatchback here 
because that portion of the battery is accessible back here and putting all of the wear items underneath that hatch so it's more serviceable. So we also buy Model S cars and um, we buy flood damage cars. We don't like doing body work or spraying paint. Um, this was a car that uh, was involved in the Florida hurricanes and uh, this is actually VIN number 69. This is a signature car. Um, in my estimation, this will be highly collectible someday because somebody may want one of the first 100 Tesla Model S's off the line. In uh, the shareholder meeting in March of 2017, I believe it was, um, there was a big screen behind Elon Musk and he was talking about the history of Tesla. At one point, a bright yellow car popped up and he said, this car, the T0, built by AC Propulsion Systems, who by the way gets very little credit, is really the genesis or the start of Tesla because this was the proof of concept vehicle that convinced us to continue building a or to start building the Roadster. Then of course they went to Lotus, got a Lotus Elise body glider and began to put electric drivetrains. For the first few Roadsters they actually used the uh, AC propulsion systems technology, uh, drivetrain and, and um, uh, the inverter. This is a T0 that was fully functional up until May 5th of 2017 when we had a fire in a building over in that other yard there. We're gonna keep this video rather short. We're gonna break it into a series after this video where we go more in depth on Roadster and Model S and how Gruber Motors goes through repairing these vehicles and the processes they take to make sure it's done properly. We hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for a lot more content on Gruber Motors as well as other weird and cool electric vehicle stuff right here on Out of Spec Motoring.